Hello there everyone, and welcome back to Napoleon Total War 3 with this Russian campaign. Last time around we defeated the Danish Navy and I was able to secure uh, trade routes here to a number of places. So we've got uh, tobacco and cotton being supplied into our trade system, which uh, increases our coffers uh, quite a bit. And uh, the Danish persist though, so we've got some ships to keep them under lock and key in uh, Norway. Now I would probably be able to convince Sweden to declare war on them and destroy them. The problem was that I've already kind of tried and the game crashed when I got a peace treaty with them earlier on. But that was when we were fighting back and forth over Copenhagen the game actually crashed so I'm wondering if I sh maybe should just let them be with that I am considering completely removing my navy I don't see really a point of having where are we looking at national summary I mean it's not that much of an upkeep but that that this upkeep but in troops would do a lot better than these ships Alternatively, we could be bold because the British hold most of Spain and most of their important ports. So I imagine they don't have that many. The Spanish fleet is more or less gone. So I'm wondering, maybe I should bring this fleet down here, see what the Spanish have down here. Take this out and we could actually start trading in ivory. And if we look at the trade on ivory 78 so that's twice as much as cotton and tobacco and if not uh, ivory then there's also sugar down here so we could increase the trade quite a lot I also notice here Sweden is sending an army down here not entirely sure where they're trying to land I've actually seen quite a few of their navies go down here not entirely sure what's going on Unfortunately, we also had to give up Copenhagen to the British. I'm hoping they'll, they'll start to actually do something up here. Um, but so far, not much have happened. Uh, and then, I've been thinking quite a lot. I've been sitting here thinking a lot about what to do here. Now, I have four armies in the region. Uh, two of which... Um, Actually, only one is a full stack. The other one's about half. How to try and defeat this? Because I have been worried about going completely head-to-head -head with the French. Because they have so many more troops than I. And now with Napoleon marching through my little uh, buffer state. Which got to live for like two turns. They marched through that. Um... There's so many French troops coming this way. Coming from all sides, really. But I've got a, I've got a plan of how I sh would take Munich from them. The problem is to defend it. Because, I mean, there's so many full stacks over here. At least six coming from over here. Then we've got another three there, so that's nine. And then we've got... Two down here. So what are we up in? Eleven full stacks. And the Austrians are not much good for anything. They have full stacks. But they never really... I mean, why aren't they sending more of these troops? They don't need to guard against the Ottomans. So they should be sending all their troops against the enemy. But they're not. Anyways, what I'm thinking today is uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna make a play for uh, Munich, rather than uh, let the the alternative is that Napoleon will probably just steamroll through and knock out the Austrians, and then having to fight Napoleon all the way from over there through here is a worse, a lot worse option to let the Austrians die. Um, so that's not what we're going to do. So what I'm going to do is we're going to send two of my stacks to try and take out these two armies. 
once that's done, then to the other stacks, Kutuzov and Kamensky is gonna move in and they're gonna make their play against the main town. So I'm gonna bring in Benningsen and I'm going to bring in um, Buxhovden and we're gonna attack this army right here. And it's gonna probably bring in this guy. Let's see here. So I think we move you over like that. And then move him to range. Okay, now we got both of our my armies against one French army. That's good. Should make it a lot more uh a lot easier to destroy them. And then once this is done, I'll jump to the next, the next, and then we'll get to the town. Not entirely sure if we can hold it, but I'm pretty sure because there's a lot of bridges here. If I take the town, I can split Napoleon's troops coming from France and those coming up from Italy. They'll be kind of split if I control these bridges. And hopefully the Austrians will help out in some way in this, in all of this, hopefully. Most likely because I'm going to have to give them Bavaria. Um, and I should give back this province as well. Right. Um, not much else to say. Let's go on for battle and beat these Frenchies. Not much really to say here, we've got two light units in the front, then the entire line of musketeers backing them up. Grenadiers over here, cavalry in the back. Uh, not gonna make many moves to start off with because we need the reinforcements. But we're gonna make some moves to prepare against an advance on the enemy. I'm gonna get three units of infantry on this side, and I'm gonna get three units of infantry on this side. Really should crest that hill over there. We'll split the cavalry in two, moving to either side. The enemy is um, kind of locked. There's a lot of like difficult terrain on these sides. They have a lot more artillery and a lot more heavy artillery. The only thing I have right now to set against them is... Are they firing towards... No, they're firing at some unit over here. I only have a two puny three-pounders right now to fire against them. So that's not a lot. Benningsen's got more. I should have actually organized what kind of soldiers he's going to bring in. Heavy cavalry is good though. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Wait, though, okay. Right. I don't know what bloody sound I made there, but there goes my guns! All of them. Right. I mean, it was. I think it is one of those units, is an old guard. Um, I've got one thing working for me right here though. Because of the difficult terrain, they're kind of and they're staying within it. So it could be that we could kind of lock them in there, right? Okay, so we've got this now horse drawn artillery coming up from the back. We'll be able to fire down through here. I'm gaining quite a bit of cavalry, the light cavalry, or the hussars. Not much use right now for the planned attack that I have, but the heavy cavalry is a lot better. So we're going to bring in the heavy cavalry on this side. I'm going to bring in the heavy cavalry on this side. And then we're basically going to move forward and attack and kind of bottle them in. And then have the cavalry and so on strike them. We've got two units of grenadiers. 
I'm gonna bring them over here. We're gonna get them there as quickly as possible. Did I tell the... yeah, do, did tell these guys to run. That's a pretty good view to fire at the enemy from. Cavalry is set up. Cannons will start blasting. I want to blast a bit of these uh, cavalry units before we attack. Now, I am getting hit by their cannons. Drag out the lines a little bit, but not much. So the idea is to attack and ho hold them here as they're all bottled up. And then sweep in with cavalry from the sides. Hussars come in, in from the back. And right now my cannons are shooting in at these guys. They're starting to move a lot of troops. And they're actually moving towards this side, which is good. Here is where I want you guys to go. It's still gonna be difficult to pull this off. Just because uh, the fringe troops are so good. Uh, grenadiers, charge that way. Looks like they're all, they're all marching this way. Interesting, they're sending the entire army towards Bennington. We should hit them when they're right here, then. Like, I should wait to advance. Even better, like, here. But I guess here is where we get them. Huh. This is actually really good. Or I need something to stop them. So I'm gonna put the two grenadier units down here. Heavy cavalry can sweep down through here and attack them. And then all this infantry will just come in through here. Cannons keep bombarding. Generals... General backing it up right there. Right now, they've got a Grenadier unit holding here. Okay, I think it's time to move now. Now... is the time to move. Actually, I want these guys to move straight through that. The cavalry will run over those cannons. Let's get heavy cavalry situated like that. Dragoons. The enemy is opening fire. Right, set up the lines. Force your force into the woods like that. Hold. And the light units hold. We're all over the place. I don't like that the Hussars turned up here. I want my Hussars to come that way. Ooh, some nice volleys into these. Before they are able to figure out what's going on. The lights are getting attacked over there. We don't like that. Form square. And then have the other unit run inside. Ah, uh, the enemy Hussars are moving in. Form square, charge, and then you run over there. My hussars will now come in from the back. At the same time, we've got all this mess going on right here. I'm charging in with loads of troops. There's a big cavalry fight. And then my infantry charged in as well. Our men are running. Damn. My cavalry didn't really get their charge off down through here. But that's going to change. Grenadier set up, fire down at them uh, through the back. 
My Hussars coming in, destroying them over there. So one Musketeer unit broke. Of the three that were sent in. Two remain. And the Lights are still here to fight. Lots of cavalry routing. Hopefully those guys won't come back. Lights to the front. This unit should have been moved a lot uh, sooner. These guys to the front. The cavalry continue to push on the enemy. Heavy cavalry set up over there. Our cavalry units that went in through here suffered too many casualties and are now retreating. Unit over there. Take control of this high ground and then we push in all around that. And then my cavalry should all go after those lancers and break them. You can drop the square now. There's no point in you holding that. Move forward a little bit. Troops moving in. Nice, nice. This one has rallied. You will follow. Bloody Lance is still there. Go, oh, we've got enemy troops that are rallying. Move to cover against them. Light troops to the front. A lot of these guys are routing. Send in the heavy cavalry. They're all kind of weak down there. There's a long run. I think striking from all sides like that, we should be able to destroy them. Cavalry going through there. Against these. We'll hold. Although, try to figure out a better angle. Cavalry not too happy with what's going on. We might be shooting a, a lot of our own here. But right now I have no like good way of... You know what? Let's form square with those two. And then we pull back the cavalry. Same time over here. Absolute destruction of the oh, French man, troops. As I was able to attack them at multiple angles there. Unfortunately, our cavalry didn't really have what it... It was a bad position there. I was surprised that they were held up by those lancers for as long as they did. But I think it was the fact that it was this uh, chasseur a cheval that was in there as well. But with that, we are victorious. We have won the battle. Touch and go for certain parts of it, but I was able to win. And with not too many casualties, I hope. And we should be able to continue on and attack the next army and then on to Munich. And here's the result of the battle. We deployed 5,500 men and we lost a thousand. So we've got 4,500 men left. The enemy deployed 3,000, where on which we were able to kill off 2,770. However, as I look at the stats here, uh, we only killed about 2,400. So it seemed to have killed almost 400 of their own in that battle. Hmm. Interesting. When it goes down to the highest killers, it actually comes down to grenadiers. And not the cavalry. But the cavalry didn't really get a chance to run them down in the same way that they usually get. It's interesting to see that they are actually uh, as infantry units in the top. Very good. And we even got a, a battle for that. We'll follow on to this one. This one's going to be a little bit more difficult. 
And I guess we'll send in Benison Benningson's army first, just because I need... He's the only one with cannons right now. Because Bucks Torven's shitty three-pounder just got deleted. This army is a lot more difficult. Chasseur Cheval de la Garde. A lot of, like, guard artillery. Howard says... Even units of the old guard is cited here. My heavy cannons are still within the kind of Saxon area. And it's going to be another one, two, three, four turns until they reach Bavaria. And probably another turn for them to actually be properly embedded within the armies. Um, look at it now though, I think we'll end this video right here and we'll start up the Bavarian campaign once more in the in the next video. Where we'll push through, take this one, that will open up the road for Katusov and Kamensky to move in. Kamensky is really just to support and then we'll move, we'll take the town, which I don't think should be a problem. And then we'll move all our armies to kind of this side, I think. Or maybe I should block just so Napoleon doesn't go through and attacks Prague. The French seem to constantly go in there. But I think with Munich falling, that would be their, the French target. So we'll set up to defend the bridge there. And we might send up the other armies to hold this bridge. Alternatively, concentrating all my troops here. On this side of the river. But that's it for today. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.
is soon to be on.